Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of TC Talk, back today with another video. In today's video, we are going to be doing our weekly armory report, as this week we played Leviah, Shadowborn Abomination. Kind of talk about the matchups and just get right into it. So yeah, if you're new to the channel, uh, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoy your stay. Definitely check out the other videos. If you're a long-standing supporter, you're amazing as always. Thank you so much. Feel free to check out the Patreon and the Discord down below. So... Uh, I, I don't really do weekly armory reports. Uh, I haven't had a chance to go to armories consistently. The main store that I enjoy going to in Dallas, Reaper Games, or outside Dallas, is over in Denton, which is about a, I'd say a 45-minute drive for me because it's they do it at the armories at Friday, on Fridays at 7 p.m., and for me, like that's like right in rush hour. By the time I get home at 5.30, let my dogs out, it's a little bit hard to make it up there all the time because of traffic, uh, but I've definitely started to try to go more and more um, and hopefully move closer there soon uh, here in the next year or so. But regardless, love to get up there when I can. And as I get up there more consistently, I want to do a weekly armory report, just something fun, talk about my matchups, talk about what heroes I'm playing, just a little fun piece of content for the community. Um, and hopefully as time goes on and I get more uh, in-depth with some of these heroes, I can you know give you some suggestions. So this week we played Leviah, Shadowborn Abomination, and first time ever playing this hero in paper. I've been testing, if you want to call it that, really just playing the hero the past week on Talishar for fun and trying to learn like the ins and outs as much as I can. Uh, and overall, um, super fun hero to play in paper. It was a little bit nerve-wracking for me because I'm trying to learn the hero kind of, you know, just in general, but also Dallas's competition is insanely crazy. Uh, it's super, super uh, talented groups here. So it's always hard to win regardless if you know you're here or not. So going into an armory where both I'm playing very high competition and I'm playing um, a hero I've never played before, it was a little bit uh, nerve-wracking. But we went 3-0 on the night. Uh, ended up tying 3-0 with another player, Ellie, who's a fantastic player um, in the scene. She's really good here in Dallas as well. Has uh, had, you know, done multiple high-level events and... Ended up uh, playing a Bravo, an Icelander, and a um, Bolton. So going into the list, the list felt great. Uh, for game one, played against Bravo. The game was pretty back and forth. I did not see a Blood Rush Bellow turn or an Art of War turn until I don't remember the exact turn count, but I would say it was around turn six to eight. It took I had to get through a good amount of my cards. I got a little lucky. They didn't really get an insane dominated turn. They like dominated a couple Spinal Crushes. Um, and then dominated one other one other card, but they didn't get like a dominated crippling or anything. They did get a 15 power star strucker, 13 power star struck, which is pretty crazy. Uh, but overall, I was able to try to manage my life total. It's a little bit scary in this matchup, at least for the few times I've played it, because in my Levia list, I'm running what? Uh, three, five, eight, um, what? Eight uh nine so only nine actually less than usual so one uh four five six yeah nine nine non-blocks or actually no 12 because of dread deadwood so 12 cards that don't block in my deck which can be a little scary against bravo uh so i was trying to use my equipment wisely really try to make the most of everything um until i finally found my blood rush bellow turns and i blood rush bellow in the art of war and just had a really good power turn i take it dealt like 26 damage uh, and after that, I just kept taking tempo. And then finally, I got them down to two, which they kind of had to go to two. It was either two and swing. I think they had a choice of going to two and swinging back for six um, against me or staying at like three or four but not being able to swing for six. And we were both at really low life totals. I think we're both at like four and four respectively. So they kind of just made the choice to, you know, go to two and not respect reckless but then i reckless swinged i actually drew into our war on that turn and I had to play our war at instant speed just to get rid of the non-six uh and then play reckless for the win so that was really good second matchup was against icelander i actually have played icelander a decent amount on talishar already because a lot of people are playing it off of that cincinnati win um and in that matchup i run ab3 i've learned that at least from my opinion they're it's nice to be able to fully block out uh, Ether Ice Bane Blues, and it's also nice to be able to fully block out In Case, which is really big against you because it can turn off your hero ability, um, which means you take Blood Debt. So I run AB3 because of that uh, and Tunic. And then um, what I'm trying to do in that matchup, and we both talked about it, uh, Steven's really good, really good player, uh, is... 
the consume flip is like so important in that matchup. You want to be able to flip to consume because it allows you to um, play out like your dread screamers and stuff like that and really go wide against uh, Icelander while also keeping pitch in hand. Like you just basically be able to play out like a red dread screamer and pitching a blue against her still with one floating and still with three cards in hand, it makes it harder for her to like prevent the rest of your turn. So that's the whole goal of that game plan. I went down to like, I don't remember the exact life total. It was like 16 or 17. So I was like in the range that I want to be in order to do the consume flip. And Steven was planning on hitting me with like a storm Shires turn to get me over the consumed and like push a lot of damage. Um, but he drew into like, I think it was like a polar blast. Um, channel like frigid and like two other cards he had nothing that could do arcane so he couldn't like do anything against me to make me not flip and once i flipped the consumed i just started going face and i ended up not banishing my last blood rush i drew into it which really helped uh and able to close the game out there and then finally played against a bolton um played against a bolton and that was a really good game. He started off with two back-to-back, -back, pretty much back-to-back -back Lumina plays, but he was on Raiden, and he wasn't on, like, a comp crazy combo raid. It's more of just, like, value, right? And then your Lumina turns, like, 15 or so damage. Um, he did have a couple good turns, and he had two Lumina turns that were really good. And then he got his third Lumina, which at the time I didn't know it. And what he was trying to do is he was trying to hit me for, like, five or so and just act like it was a normal turn that he was going to Arsenal. And then he was going to play Lumina at the end and hit me for 10 after I chose not to block. Because I think he played like Beaming Bravado, uh, charging a yellow, gave it go again. Then he played like another two power or three power attack. So it looked kind of like a rinky dink turn a little bit. And then maybe Raiden for three. Which, so I didn't block at all, right? I'm not going to block six. And I think he was trying to then play Lumina and hit me in with Raiden for 10. Um, and I scouting flesh bagged that second attack just as an insurance policy because I was like, maybe it's a Valiant Thrust, something crazy. Um, and it ended up being his Lumina. So he couldn't Lumina me because he didn't have a Spirit Arena out, so he couldn't instant speed it. And that saved me 10 points of damage, which at the time I didn't know. He told me after the game. And that kind of took the whole game on its head. Um, then at the end of the game, though, we were going back and forth, both trading, and he was ahead of me in life. 8, 17, or 18 to, I think I only had 8. I went really low, and I drew, I don't remember the exact play line, but I Art Award, banishing a Slithering, which is a really good combo you want to do, right, to be able to give Slithering go again, and then because you banish it and still can play it, and I drew into a Blood Rush Bellow with two cards in hand, um, and then I play out the Blood Rush Bellow because I was like, man, Blood Rush Bellow and Art Award is really good. And then when I drew up again, I had a Blood Rush Bellow in hand and two reds. And basically my options were, I, after looking at all the options, is play out Slithering for eight, go again, and then play a Graveling Growl red. Yeah, it was a Blood Rush Bellow, a Graveling Growl red, and I forgot what the last card was. I think it was a, I'm trying to remember, a Swing Big. Um like, my, my choices basically were Slithering for 8, which go again, and then Graveling for 9, which is 17. And he was at 18. So I was going to put him at 1 life. And he had 1 armor. And so I was like, he had a 4-card hand. I was like, he's just going to not block and make me have to try to kill him. Or at least maybe block with his armor and go down to, like, 4 or 5 or something like that. Um, so I was like, you know what? This is for fun. It's armory. Let's try it and see what happens. So I took the risky play, and I pitched my swing big. Um in order to play or pitch my graveling no pitch my swing big in order to play the set another blood rush banishing that graveling growl and that time i drew up in two more cards and my thought process was if i draw two reds i'm screwed um i basically play slithering for 10 go again and then uh depending on what i draw that's pretty much it and i'm that, that's it and but if i can draw into a yellow and a blue then i can play claw claw slithering um, which is what I did. So uh, I drew into a yellow and a blue. I got lucky, and I ended up clawing for seven because I was double blood rush, um, clawing for seven uh, at that point, having one floating, and then I was able to slithering for 10 because it was off double blood rush. So I was able to do a 24 damage turn uh, <laughs> off of that, and that just completely like took him to where he had to block his whole hand. He still took like seven damage down to 10 and it was still eight to 10 at that point. So it's still anyone's game, but I kind of just took tempo after that uh, because from that point on, 
I ended up um, just playing like Dread Screamer after Dread Screamer uh, and kind of constantly threatening like 12 damage. So he had to constantly block. He couldn't really get his Lumina play off. And the good thing about that was, or not the good thing, the scary thing even after that crazy kind of like RNG-ish play was I had about 15 cards in Graveyard and I had seven hits and eight misses. And I had back-to-back -back Dread Screamer plays off two turns. So, like, there was two turns where there was a high chance I could miss. And both times I hit 1-6. So, a little bit of luck. But, hey, that's that's just Levia sometimes. You got to do it that way. Levia, the way I've I've already seen it. Um, and ended up winning that game, I think, like, five life to nothing, four life to nothing. So, really good game. Really close. Really fun. I think the bolton Leviathan matchup kind of goes like that, honestly. Both both uh, heroes kind of got to take chances in order to win that game. So, super good. Uh, the list felt great. Um, nothing really feels too bad about it right now. Like, there's no changes I would make. I'm not really missing anything, honestly. Uh, it, it all would be kind of like a preference thing, but there's not anything where I was like, man, I wish I had this card. I think the blue Gravelings are amazing. Being able to draw into these off Art of War and play it one for five go again is super nice um especially if you draw it depends on what you're drawing like if you draw into this and another red um you know it depends on depends on what you're drawing but having late game one for five go again off art of war i just I, it's irreplaceable to me um if diabolic offering is nice but the fact that i have a three block that also can come in for five is really good especially late game because you're pitching these early so um also another big winner was doomsday i got this out in icelander and i got it out in bravo um getting the blasphemate token out is just huge in this meta it seems like it seems even more important than it used to be because now Lev levi can push so much damage that when she has that blasphemate out they kind of have to focus on that card but the fact that you can like art of war go again slithering into like a blasphemate is just so nutty, like 12 damage off literally one resource if you want to do it. It just the value of blasphemate goes up, in my opinion, because of the consistency that Leviah has now with the consume flip. And you can go super wide once you flip if you have blasphem out, which is what I actually did against the Bravo um, for a couple turns. Being able to play like Dread Screamer into uh, something else, into a into a, like you know, something else into maybe blasphemate and having like a three wide turn, uh, depending if you have the action points for it is super nice. So overall really enjoying it. I'm going to keep playing Leviah. It's pretty funny. Like I haven't won armory in a while. I keep, I, I literally went two and one, like six different armories. So the fact that I finally went three and oh with a hero that I've never played with ever in paper is kind of funny. Um, but everyone was trying new stuff. There was Boltons, there was Bravo, Icelander, Kano, um, Prism, um, I was on Levia. Uh, there was all types of fun stuff going on. So people were super excited about the new set and, you know, excited to do the R armories. Uh, I may do a, like a one or two card change later on just to kind of play around with stuff, but I'm really enjoying where the list is at right now. Um, I don't see what I would change, but yeah, uh, hope you like the cyber content. If you do, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. If not me, go to our flesh bug career, leave a like, comment, subscribe on their stuff so you can get more people seeing this game. Let me know what you think of the list. Let me know what your thoughts are on Levi as a whole, and I'll see you all next time on TC Talk. Thank you all so much.